Welcome back live to the showdown. We have a lot to talk about the Steelers to so get right into it. Le'Veon Bell, Andrew Filipponi, they have options here. Franchising is one thing. They can also do an exclusive rights or non-exclusive rights. What do you think they're going to do with Le'Veon Bell, and should they bring him back? No, I wouldn't. Um, I, I've seen some very compelling arguments in the last few days on the heels of what he did at the end of the year that tell me at this point I'd rather take the $15 million and reinvest it in other places. I think this team is in need of an attitude overhaul, and I think he, his elimination off this roster would go a long way in that vein. So I would get rid of him. I would tag him, but I would do it with the intent or the hope that somebody does give me two first-round picks for him. I don't think that would happen. Uh, then I would live with the tag and move on after next year. Uh, I think that the offense needs to be as hermetically sealed as possible because the defense, as we're going to talk about in a little bit, needs a, uh, I still think, a significant overhaul. So they're going to have to score points, and he's going to help them do that next year. I would not do it for a lot of the reasons Andrew outlined. I think you need to make some sort of statement that this stuff will not be tolerated. Um, and I don't see the value in $14 million for anybody unless it's a Super Bowl winning quarterback. I would, I would not do it. All right, Tim, we're talking about the defense now. It let them down this postseason, last postseason, big plays. They put a lot of money into their defense, a lot of draft picks over the last several years. But yet Mike Tomlin took over some of the play calling and some of the control. What does it say about where they are and what must they do moving forward? Oh, I think they've got to make a lot of decisions about their front seven. It's kind of funny to talk about that in a year where they had themselves a sack record. Um, and we're so used to talking about the woes in the secondary. But to me, I think they've got to figure out what their front seven is. For as many sacks as they had, uh, it was a low since, what, 2014, which was uh, an all-time low in the uh, butler LeBeau era from the outside linebacking position. Uh, they had to get rid of James Harrison because he couldn't cover. It uh, used to be that outside linebackers were about pass rushing. So I think my big thing for the defense right now is figure out what you are in the front seven. And, for instance, if you're not going to give the fifth-year tender to Bud Dupree, get ready to just find yourself real pass rushing 4-3 uh, um, down linemen on the outside and then get guys who can cover at the linebacker position and become more of a traditional you know, 4-3 defense before you go to your base nickel, which is basically what it is now anyway. Well, this is what I would do. I, I would start by getting rid of Mike Mitchell. See ya, your mouth. That too. It, it, it you know, does not match your play. He's part of the culture change that I'm talking about. I, I don't want to see his face in Latrobe when the Steelers show up in July. Vince Williams, to me, is more Robin than Batman. i got to find an inside linebacker to pair with him next year. I'm praying that a good guy gets cut a la Joe Hayden, and I can use that bell money to find that guy. If that's not an option or if they're unwilling to cut ties with Bell. I think Kevin Colbert's got to take a future first round pick and move up in the draft, Bob. I think the kid from Georgia, Smith is his name, right? I mean, yeah. this inside linebacker that's an absolute freak, he's a top 10 pick. I think you got to go up and get that guy. And the guy Andrew, from Alabama, too. Yeah, I don't disagree with you on Mitchell. I think that's the right move to make. But if you do that, they have a couple sneaky, huge holes to fill. I mean, we're talking about middle linebacker. We're talking about safety. And, and Tim, like you're saying, the outside linebacker depth is not great. You don't have anybody who can legitimately rush the passer. I mean, is, is Bud Dupree the, uh, you know, beast that you're well, hoping to Well, but no, Jason, that, that, that's why you get rid of Bell. Because yeah, no, you, can use your sec you can use a second or third round pick to take the Auburn running back. Take one of the I'm Georgia running you. backs. Use one of those guys and save yourself the dough. If you save Bell and Mitchell, you're talking about $20 million that you right. can reinvest into the product in areas of need, and they certainly have that. Interesting, no defensive changes to their coaching staff, which is interesting after what happened. The only change, Todd Haley, and it looks like he may be headed to Cleveland as their offensive coordinator. Interesting. Wish we had time for that, but we don't. We'll get on to some other topics, but right now it's time for our Smooth Moves. Let's go around the horn. Smooth Moves is brought to you by Pittsburgh's largest supplier of the smoothest granite, marble, and quartz countertops, Armina Stone. So, let's start with you, Andrew, your Smooth Move of the Week. I'm going to give some love to Duquesne basketball. The kid Williams makes all those three-pointers and the double overtime win. Keith Dambra, they can't get an at-large bid. They've got to win that conference tournament to get in, but they're in the mix for the first time in 40 years. Go ahead, uh, Jason. All right. I'm going to stick with hockey for mine. Uh, the Las Vegas Golden Knights, Marc-Andre Fleury, 
the best team in hockey um, as of this Number stadium. one. Number one, <laughs> Pomp. Very nice. Uh, Marc-Andre Fleury, he deserves it, and it's good to see yep. that stuff happen. Uh, I will give my smooth move to John Burnett, KDK weatherman, who just tonight learned the new usage of the phrase GOAT, meaning greatest <laughs> of all time, when Bob was doing a sportscast <laughs> describing Jack Nicholas. When John heard that with shock and awe, he had no idea why Bob was calling him a GOAT as in like the animal, the old yes, usage. Right. John is much more hip now after tonight's KDK Sports Showdown. So John Burnett gets my smooth move of the week. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, he just logged on to Twitter. I just see it, John, go, go nuts. <laughs> All right, those are our smooth moves of the week. Brought to you by Armina Stone. <laughs> who features Pittsburgh's largest indoor stone gallery of granite marble countertops imported from all over the world to give you the smoothest countertops in the area. Score a touchdown with a new granite countertop from Armina Stone. Pirates next.